This is the Para Cave Podcast, proudly brought to you by major sponsor Jack's Pale Ale, exclusively available at Parramatta Leagues Club, and co-sponsors Bo Cook from Lone Market, Scott from Brightside Detailing and Ceramics, Shannon Cooney from Glenmore Park Realty, BTZD Clothing, the official clothing partner of the Paracave Podcast, and the official media partner of the Paracave Podcast, the Parramatta Times. Welcome to another episode of the Paracave Podcast. And now over to your host, Troy Warner, broadcasting live from the world famous Paracave. And yes, hello and welcome back to another episode of the Paracave Podcast. Troy Warner here, and this is the tipping podcast of the NRL, and it is round 18 of the Telstra Premiership, and we are back to eight games this weekend and my team the Parramatta Eels are having their second bye so a week off from watching my team play this weekend which is you know a little bit different I obviously would love to see them play every week but obviously with the buys you can't do that so after a magnificent victory against the Dolphins up there at the Sunshine Coast last week which I was lucky enough to be at it was a great weekend, great to catch up with some Queensland listeners and some Queensland para fans as well uh, that I don't get to see that often, so that was a great little weekend. So the players, some of the players have stayed up there and visiting family and the like all around Queensland and others have come back to New South Wales as well and having a week off. So anyway, enough of that. This is the Tipping Podcast. So let's get into it. And the first game of the weekend is the Sharks versus the Dragons at Points Bet Stadium, which is Cronulla's home ground. And it is against the the Sharks versus the Dragons, 4th versus 17th. And look, this game... All the talk again this week has been about Ben Hunt and will he play and will he be captain? Well, he's been named at captain. He's been named at halfback. Those dramas keep on happening week in, week in, week out at the moment, I should say. Um, but he is playing, or he's been named anyway, at halfback. And for the Cronulla Sharks, well, Toby Rudolph has been named on an extended bench and he has he's coming back from injury turf toe apparently uh so he is on an extended bench but the Cronulla Sharks will they'll be looking to consolidate a top four uh, position on the ladder with a win this is a local derby so there's both the Sharks teams and the Cronulla, uh, sorry, the Dragons teams love playing this game. It's a local derby, and if you remember, I think the last game they played was in round four, and it was Nico Hines' first game for the season against the um, in the NRL this year after his Dally M winning season last year in 2022, and absolutely starred in the game. The Sharks got the win that day, 40 points to eight. Uh, so... I'm going to tip the Sharks in this game. I just think there's too many too many dramas going on at the Dragons at the moment. A huge distraction. And as I said, the Sharks will want to uh, continue on their winning ways and stay in that top four and stay in contention with the leaders. So I think Nico Hines will be pumped for another big game as well. Obviously, State of Origin 3 is just around the corner and teams will be picked soon and he will want to get into that team for game three as there may be some changes into that team. Do they name some new blood? Do they name uh, the current players that are playing? He is certainly in the mix to play 5-8 with probably Mitchell Moses to play halfback again. 
Uh, the Cronulla Sharks, they'll be um, buoyed by the news that Teague Wilton has re-signed with the club for another couple of years as well. Great signing there, the second rower, so they'll be buoyed by that. And look, I'm I'm tipping... I'm tipping the Sharks 13 plus in this game. I just really think they'll turn it on against the Dragons, who absolutely got hammered by the Warriors' last start down in Wollongong, 48 points to 18. So I'm going to tip, unfortunately, another big defeat that the Dragons will suffer to the hands of the Sharks. Now, the second game of the round is the first game of. Friday, so back to the 6 p.m. game on Friday, and it sees the Warriors take on the Rabbitohs over there in New Zealand at the newly named Go Media Stadium in Auckland. Now, the Warriors, as I just said, they had a massive win against the Dragons 48 to 18 uh, last weekend down in Wollongong. And look, they don't that last week. They just really turned it on. Dallin Wateni Zelezniak scoring four tries in that game. Some of them really spectacular finishes. He First time he has scored four tries in a game. Uh, first time in a long time that any Warriors player has scored four tries in a game. So well done to him. They're obviously missing Murata Neokore, who is suspended uh, for this game, I think for two, three weeks actually. Um, so a big out there as he has been one of the form back rowers in the competition at the moment. So they'll miss him, no doubt. Um, but as I said, they've been playing some really good football last couple of weeks. Sean Johnson, he's really turning back the clock to his early days back there at the Warriors and really running this team down around very well. New coach Andrew Webster, he's got a new he's brought out a new lease of life for these players uh, from what we've seen from the old Warriors teams where they used to win a couple, lose a couple, win a couple, lose a couple, but there's a little bit of consistency there. Their defence has really toughened up and they're not leaking as many points as they previously had. So well done to the Warriors. And for the Rabbitohs, well, Latrell Mitchell still out um, with that calf strain. Looks like he's going to be out for another few weeks as well. Probably is unavailable for Game 3 of the State of Origin Series for New South Wales. But the Rabbitohs, look, they've been struggling of, of late. They, um, they've been struggling of late. They got touched up by the Cowboys, 31-6 to last start. And then the Dragons, who haven't been performing so well, got them 36-30. to Look, uh, they've only had one win out of their last five, the Rabbitohs. The Warriors have had four out of their last five, so... They are really, as I said, on the march, playing some good football. At one stage there, when Parramatta played the Rabbitohs a few weeks ago, the Rabbitohs were sitting on top of the comp. Uh, now they find themselves in eighth position, and potentially after this weekend may see them drop out of the top eight. So a crucial game for the Rabbitohs. Um, we'll just have to wait and see what will happen there. Campbell Graham, look, I think he's been the most unluckiest player this year not to get a origin spot in the centres there. So potentially he could get a spot for game three. if he ha He's been playing some great footy all year. So uh, we'll just have to wait and see whether he gets picked or not. So, But I'm going to go with the Warriors in this game. Look. I think it could be a 1-12 to game, but don't be surprised if it's another 13-plus win for the Warriors. So, But I'm going to go the Warriors in this game over the Rabbitohs simply because the Warriors have been playing better football at the moment than the Rabbitohs, and it is in New Zealand. Now, the second game of Friday night sees the Storm take on the Panthers. So... Some are calling this the game of the round. And if you look at the matchups, potentially it is. And it is first versus third. Now, this game's played at Marvel Stadium in Melbourne. The Women's World Cup in 
uh, football, soccer, um, as some people know it as well, is being played in Australia. So for the next five weeks, six weeks, uh, you'll see the Melbourne Storm and the Brisbane Broncos. The Brisbane Broncos will be playing out of the Gabba and the Melbourne Storm will be playing out of Marvel Stadium in Melbourne. Now, the last time Melbourne played at Marvel Stadium was in 2010. They'll probably play this game with the roof on, which will be another new experience for some of the players. And it's also a round field as well, so play a lot of AFL on there. So a round field and rugby league can sometimes be difficult as it's obviously not rectangle so kicking for the sideline can be difficult as well and as well as the in goals so it'll be interesting to see how it goes now uh, comments from Cameron well Ca- uh, Christian Welsh I should say sorry uh, in the press conference against their last game in uh, against Newcastle uh, sorry their last game that they played um, about the Penrith Newcastle game when Penrith arrested their origin stars were saying how did Newcastle lose that game uh, Panthers had nobody so that will obviously fire up the Panthers players and, and in particular obviously the front rowers for the Panthers Moses Leota and James Fisher Harris so the origin players for Penrith return uh, Brian Toto, Stephen Crichton, um, Liam Martin, Isaiah Yo, and Jerome Luai. They all return. Obviously, still no Nathan Cleary for Penrith. Jack Cogger is in that halfback position. For Melbourne, big in for Melbourne. Cameron Munster is back. Some said that he had caxtonitis uh, with reference to Queensland's win in the origin last Wednesday and the Queensland team celebrating at the Caxton Hotel so uh, some are saying that Cameron had a bit of caxtonitis well anyway he must have recovered well and he's back in this game at 5'8 for the Melbourne Storm in this game so look round field it's going to be interesting. I think I think Melbourne might just get away with this one. This one's going to be a 1-12, to 12, I think. And I think it's going to be Melbourne who get this win. Look, the Panthers, they are playing some good footy. They got the win last week against Newcastle, 20-12, uh, to 12, without those Origin players. And uh, the week before, they went down in extra point, extra, sorry, Golden Point extra time uh, to the Cowboys 27-23 where Scott Drinkwater scored that Golden Point try. So before that, they've beaten the Roosters, Dragons, Broncos. So um, the so they've had some good wins. They had that loss against the Cowboys. Um, they got up against the Spirited Knights side without their Origin players. But I just think that the Melbourne Storm will get this win. They've they both both teams have won four out of their last five. Um, but I think that Melbourne will get this one to twelve. So I'm going to tip Melbourne in that one. Super Saturday sees the Raiders take on the Titans down there in Canberra at GIO Stadium. The Raiders in sixth position at the moment. The Titans in ninth position. Now the the Titans have sacked their coach, Justin Holbrook, and the old sack the coach, get the win. Curse struck struck on the weekend with the Titans beating the Broncos. And this game it should be an interesting one. Look, uh, Jared Croker, he's on HIA watch. Um, he may play, he may not. A big out for Canberra is Josh Papali'i. Um, but the... Raiders had a good win against the Roosters last week, a close win, 20 to 18. Um, the Gold Coast Titans they had a, a win against the Broncos as well. So in the local Queensland derby, Big Tino is back for the Titans, which is a big in for them. Now at the time of re- this recording, the Reese Walsh case at the judiciary hasn't 
hasn't been finalised, so we don't know what is happening there with Reese Walsh, whether he will play in Origin Game 3. So it is a very big game for possibly AJ Brimson, who is 18th man, I think, in the um, State of Origin Game 2 for Queensland. So I think maybe he might get that origin spot at fullback if Reese Walsh is rubbed out. So a big game for AJ coming up. I just think this game, even though the um, Titans had a good win against the Broncos last week, I think that uh, they always step up against the Broncos, little brother versus big brother in the Queensland derby. But I just think that the Raiders... The Raiders have been playing some really good footy this year. They're pretty solid um, team at the moment. They've they've had three out of their last five wins. The Titans have had two out of their last five, uh, including that 18-12 win against the Broncos. Now, interesting for the Titans, their last six out of their eight, uh, nine games left are at home. So you may see them sneak into the top eight, uh, considering they have those home games as well. So always crucial playing at at home. So they've got six out of the last nine. So uh, if they can get this win, then it will be a good win for them. And looking at those games ahead, even though they're against tough, tough opposition, uh, they're still at home. So... There should be a lot of points scored in this game. Last time they played was last season. The Raiders getting that victory 36-24 to at up at the Gold Coast. Um, a close game in the first time they played last year, 24-22 uh, down there in Canberra. So I'm tipping a lot of points to be scored in this game. I think this could be a 1-12 to victory to the, the Raiders. The second game of Super Saturday sees the Cowboys take on the West Tigers. So the Cowboys having that winner over the Rabbitohs last week. The Tigers coming off a bye. Now, we all remember last time these two teams played, and that was at Leichhardt Oval, and it was 66-18 to to the Tigers. I think that was Luke Brooks's 200th game. So... Um, very interesting that that was the score last time they've played, but it was a it's a very different uh, Cowboys side to that night there, um, and certainly a different Tigers side as well. So uh, look, the Tigers they've been playing some pretty good footy um, with some close losses, but. Uh, they've had some controversial losses as well, considering the one against the Raiders. That was pretty controversial, I thought. Um, the last three games they've lost, or well, they have been competitive. They had that. The, their last win was that win against the Cowboys, sixty-six to eighteen. So, going to be interesting. Uh, what happens there? I think. Look, this is. 10th versus 16th, the Cowboys in 10th. They're trying to slowly climb up the ladder and get into that top eight. So they know any game that they lose will be top eight slipping away. So Jason Taumalolo has been named as the 18th man. So interesting, he may or may not sneak into that uh, bench spot or possibly even to that starting side somewhere but at the moment he's been named as the 18th man for that team the Cowboys Alex Twell well look we've all been on Twell watch uh, forever now for 116 games but he got his first try in his last game he's probably a little bit upset he had the bye actually I uh, I actually think he might score another try here. There you go. There's a little bit of an exclusive. He might go on a try scoring run, but um, you never know. But he's back in the side, and big Stefano Utukamanu is back from origin duty into that starting prop position as well. Dane Laurie comes into 5'8". 
uh, for the Tigers. First time he's played first grade in a while. Um, but I think this could be could be nasty for the Tigers, I think. I think this could be Cowboys a 13-pluser uh, up there at Queensland Country Bank Stadium. They grow another leg up there at Queensland at Townsville. So I'm going to tip the Cowboys 13-plus on that one. The last game of Super Saturday sees another local derby. The Broncos take on the Dolphins. Broncos in second position now on the ladder. Dolphins 11th on the ladder after starting the season very, very well. Have slipped away a little bit. A few losses, um, a few injuries, suspensions, and obviously during that origin period as well, losing their best players. Um, So they've slipped down the ladder a little bit as well. So they'll want to be getting this win against their big brothers um, because, you know, they want to stay in touch with that top eight. So... Uh, they've only had the one meeting, and that went 18-12 to the Broncos, so a very close game. But that was way back in March, and that was at Suncorp Stadium as well. So um, a massive sold-out crowd there. So um, uh, so they've only played the once. So Broncos are raging hot favourites in this game. I can't see the Dolphins getting another win or a win against the Broncos this week. They do welcome back Jeremy Marshall King uh, back into that hooking position. He has been one of their players of the year so far uh, before he got injured and suspended. So he is back for them. Reese Walsh, as I said before, is currently at the judiciary whilst this podcast is being re- recorded. So when it comes out tomorrow, uh, sorry, Wednesday, you will know whether he is guilty or not guilty of uh, some profanities at a referee. So at the moment, Teamless Tuesday, he's been named at fullback. I don't think he will play... To be honest, I think he might be found guilty, but we'll just have to wait and see. As I said, before uh, you hear this podcast, you'll know the answer. Uh, If he is ruled out, I would expect probably Tristan Saylor to go back to that fullback position. He slotted in there a couple of times there for Reese when he was playing Origin. So I think he will go into that fullback position if Reese's suspension is su- suspended. Uh, Jordan Ricky and Thomas Flegler are, Flegler are out, uh, both suffering foot injuries, big losses for the Broncos. The uh, Tom Flegler has been playing some really good footy this year and... Um, yeah, huge out for them, the Broncos. Again, this game's played at the Gabba up in Queensland. Very famous guy, uh, ground up there in Brisbane. Home to the Brisbane Lions in the AFL. Um, I think the last time a, a rugby league game was played on the Gabba was 1968, I think. Uh, Queensland against the touring Great Britain side, I think it was. And the Great Britain side got the win that day, so... Um, for myself, Parramatta's playing the Broncos a little bit later on in the season at the Gabba as well, so that'll be a new experience. Again, around field, it's going to be interesting. Not very good for spectators uh, being around field, but um, good local derby. Look, I think this could be a 1-12 to game, but I think the Broncos, they'll want to get back into their winning ways and get this win. I wouldn't be surprised if Wayne Bennett's got a a trick or two up his sleeve uh, against his former club as well. The Dolphins, they'll want to get a win as well and just stay in touch with that top eight. But it's going to be very difficult indeed. I'm going to go the Broncos 1-12. Sunday kicks off with the Bulldogs versus the Knights. Two teams that are struggling at the moment. Although, in saying that, you would say that the Newcastle Knights are playing a little bit of better football at the moment of these two clubs. Um, the Bulldogs coming off a bye this week, uh, but they've really been struggling the last few weeks. They 
had a close loss to the Roosters and then got smacked by the Eels and the Sharks. Um, the Newcastle Knights, they've had a few close losses to the Panthers, Roosters and Broncos. They beat the Sea Eagles. Um, look, they're not far away. They're just not getting those wins this is 15th versus 14th, the Knights 14th, the Bulldogs 15th. Um, this is played at a core stadium in Sydney on Sunday. Let's hope it's a uh, nice day down there. Dane Gagai is out of the side for Newcastle, which is a big out for them. Um, but uh, look, I think, I think in this game, I think this is going to be a one to twelve. I think it's going to be a high-scoring game. To be honest, I think there might be a lot of points scored in this game, but I think it still might be a close game. So I'm going to go Newcastle one to twelve in this one. Uh, I think the Bulldogs are just struggling a little bit more than the Newcastle Knights. So I can see. The Knights getting the victory in this one. Now, the last game of the round is at Four Pines Park, which is the old Brookvale Oval. You can call it Brookvale Oval. I don't mind, but officially it is Four Pines Park. Sees the Sea Eagles take on the Roosters. 12th versus 7th, uh, sorry, 13th. There are Sea Eagles in 13th and the Roosters in 12th. Now, a couple of turbos are back for Manly, but not the main turbo. So, obviously, he's gone for the season with that pec injury. But Ben Travojevic and Jake Travojevic return to the Manly team. Jake back to lock and Ben back onto the interchange bench. So, a couple of big ins there. And also, um, Ruben Garrick goes back to fullback to replace Tommy T. And because Brad Parker is back as well at centre for the Manly Seagulls. The Sydney Roosters struggling as well at the moment. A lot of people tip them to win the competition uh, at, at the start of the year. But things aren't just going right for them at the moment. A lot of pressure on James Tedesco. Um, he's been struggling a little bit. He will be himself disappointed with his form at the moment, both at club level and also origin level, and he will want to be hopefully wanting to turn that around for them. A few injuries for the Chookies. Angus Crichton is out, and also Satuli Tupanua is out as well. So a couple of big injuries there for the Roosters. So going to be interesting this one. I, look, I think I'm just going to have to tip Manly at home, I think. Uh, the, the Roosters really struggling at the moment. Um, they haven't played this year so far. Last time they played was last year. The Roosters got the win 20-10. to 10. And, look, two wins each out of their last five games for both teams. Um, the last time the last time that the Sea Eagles played at home, it was against the Dolphins, and they put a score on them, 58-18. to 18. So I don't think it's going to be that high-scoring game, um, this game against the Roosters, but I think that the Manly Sea Eagles will get the win as well. Now, don't forget, oh, sorry, recapping my tips there for this week. I'm going to go the Sharks, Warriors, the Storm, Raiders, Cowboys, Broncos, Knights, and Sea Eagles. And also, don't forget that this week is Beanies for Brain Cancer round as well. So if you're at a game, Purchase your beanie as well. Support the Mark Hughes Foundation. $25 for a beanie. There's a couple of great designs going around this year, as they always are. But, um, yeah, grab a beanie at, uh, at the grounds or your Lowe's or IGA stores as well. 
uh, or you can head to the website as well, uh, the Mark Hughes Foundation, and you can order there as well. But, yeah, Mark Hughes Foundation doing great things. I think it's the seventh year they've done this now, and they're looking to sell their one millionth beanie um, throughout this entire campaign that they've done over the seven years. So a magnificent effort there. And also they have raised up to $24 million as well So for brain cancer research. So uh, trying to find a cure for that. So um, the Beanie for Brain Cancer round is a great round. You'll see all the players run out on the field with their beanies on um, and hopefully a lot in the crowd as well. So um, great stuff that the Mark Hughes Foundation is doing. So please support them. Grab yourself a beanie. I've got mine and um, certainly comes in handy on these winter mornings as well. Keep your head warm and they'll keep your head warm during the games as well so um support the mark hughes foundation grab yourself a beanie beanies for brain cancer around enjoy your footy uh this weekend i'll enjoy watching some footy this week without having the uh pressure of watching a Parramatta game or the disappointment of a loss or the excitement of a win um so i'll just be enjoying some footy this week and i will be back uh, next week with round 19 tips and also stay tuned this week for some more content as well another exciting interview show coming your way on thursday which which will be tomorrow when this podcast comes out um so yes enjoy your round of footy don't forget buy a bernie support mark hughes foundation and hope your team gets up this weekend. Now, you can copy my tips if you want. Last week, I got five out of seven. Hoping to get that exclusive, uh, sorry, elusive uh, perfect round this week. So, pretty confident with my tips. So, you can copy them if you want and see how you go. Or just let me know who your tips are and uh, we'll see if we've got many different and yeah enjoy your footy thank you very much for listening and i hope your team gets up thank you for listening to another episode of the parakeet podcast see you next time